you're just in time to join us as we head out to our next destination. To recap, we are in beautiful Portugal and on day three of our trip, the next leg of our journey takes us to beautiful Porto with its gorgeous basilicas, picturesque modern architecture, gilded buildings at the town square. Porto is a unique blend of ancient and modern which you can simply lose yourself in. The city has also been described as having a down-to-earth culinary roots which I was very eager to explore. We left Porto by road. En route, we had a chance to visit a famous pilgrimage spot called Fatima that sees thousands of worshippers all across the globe. And since we were on a vacation, we took a quick break at the beautiful seaside town of Alviaro to have lunch, enjoy the scenic beauty and take mouth-watering pictures at an absolutely amazing seafood restaurant by the beach. They offered us delicious stew of mussels, clams, prawns and octopus which was quickly becoming my favourite with olive oil and all crusty loaf of bread. Yum! Before we continued on our way, we had a chance for a bit of coffee and some obvious moles di aviaro, soft eggs from aviaro literally which is a local delicacy made with egg yolks and sugar. The pastry's filling is tucked inside a dough casing shaped in various ocean-related themes like fishes or seashells. We were exhausted by the time we reached Porto and therefore, before we decided to turn in for the day and begin our exploration of this fascinating city, one tip from the locals encouraged us to try out Franzazina, said to be the city's official dish. You can find it nearly in every restaurant here in Porto. Franzazina is a kind of Portuguese croque madame with two pieces of thick bread filled with your choice of meats, squished down with cheesy drippings and then topped with thin sauce made with beer and tomatoes. It is every bit as delicious as it sounds. Next day, we started our tour by visiting the museum at Porto and letting ourselves be absorbed by the rich history and culture on display. We decided to visit the Hogwarts Library. Yes, you heard it right. We went to the Hogwarts Library or rather the Liviara Lelo Porto, which was used as the backdrop for those beautiful shots in Harry Potter movies. Be sure to get there early or you'll find yourself in painfully long wait for entry like we did. On traversing the city, we came across a local fish market and I couldn't call myself a chef if I did not stop by to see what was on offer. What caught my eye was a particular type of fish that looked a lot like the Bengali fish called Ilish. Oh, Bengali obsession. Portugal's love for seafood can easily be seen by the grilled fish that is available at nearly every corner, all freshly caught. We took a stroll by the Atlantic Ocean, taking the opportunity to savor its beautiful blue vastness. Seeing the ocean and the sky blending together into one horizon left me humbled at how tiny my existence truly was. But no matter how tiny our existence may be, our hunger pangs was still sizable. So we dropped by a seaside restaurant the locals had recommended. The variety of seafood platters, stews, clams, fried sardines, sea brim, grilled, did an admirable job of appeasing our stomachs. In the evening, we went visiting a seaside fort that we had heard and dropped by at 25 Dear Brill Bridge. This suspension bridge connecting the city of Lisbon to the municipality of Almada on the left bank of the Tagus River looked incredibly like the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, US. A great view with a great background for portrait shots. 
A day well spent. Our second day at Porto saw us touring their famous vineyards and tasting their local vinos in a wine tour. Their offerings included some of nine different wines. But what I found of interest to me was their port wine, which was typically rich, sweet, served at the end of the meal as a dessert wine. It, this was followed by an awesome lunch at Quinta di Pancia, made better with some best Porto wines. To cap off our last day in Porto, we decided to take a quick day trip to Braga, which is a city in the far north of Portugal and the northeast of Porto. It is known for its religious heritage and is also home to one of the oldest and the most beautiful cathedral in Portugal, Bom Jesus de Monte. When we reached Braga, we took a funicular ride to climb up and see a beautiful monastery of Dominos de Jesus. It's a beautiful multi-level sanctuary with a restored chapel and a curated gardens. We walked down 800 steps alongside fountains and chapels decorated with blue tiles and reached a point from where you could get an aerial view of the town of Braga. After a quick but heavy lunch, we proceeded towards Guimarias, an ancient town near Porto. It is well known for well-preserved medieval buildings like the hilltop, the 10th century Guimarias castle with sweeping city views. And that saw us completing our Porto leg of our Portugal trip. And what a visit it was. Walking amidst those beautiful preserved buildings made me really get a feel of life back in the days of the kings and the queens. With its delicious food, hidden gems and laid-back atmosphere, Porto is a must-visit for anyone in Portugal.